Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Manor Lords. Last time we suffered a rather humiliating defeat against the enemy Baron and uh, our greed at uh, grabbing land from that enemy Baron has resulted in a few issues, namely hunger. I have sorted those issues out now but it is very clear that we need to do a lot more before we can finally defeat the enemy Baron. So let's dive in. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is sort out some issues in Waldbrand. At the moment, the approval rating is pretty poor, so we need to get our trading post up and running and uh, sort out a few issues here. The first thing we need to do is get all of these Burgage plots constructed so that we can turn them into uh, farms and stuff. As I said in the last episode when we started here, this is all going to be a bit of a, a built-up town area. And Waldbrand is probably going to become more of a production house for a bunch of other stuff. I haven't decided what yet because the resource spread here is not great. Obviously, we have a very good hunting ground with rich wild animal deposits. We've also got a rich clay deposit. So there's some things that we will exploit a little bit later on. Over in Eichenhau, they have a rich stone deposit here, which could be really useful moving forward. Uh, it doesn't seem like there are any other rich deposits in this land, though, uh, it, over in Zviau. But it does have the bonus of having some really good field fertility, where we've already had a couple of harvests come in, and that is probably going to grow as our population grows. At the moment, we've got 41 living spaces, but only 27 families living in there at the moment. Over in... Uh, Wald brand, we've got 17 families, but another 37 households can be uh, brought in. So what I want to do is I want to talk about how we're going to finally push back against the enemy lord. And uh, the staging point for this is actually going to be Selbitz. Now Selbitz has good wild animals and a buried deposit really close proximity there. We've also got a very rich clay deposit. My plan is to build a manor right on the edge of town here. That way we have a bit of a defense for if we decide to stake another claim in Selbit. Now at the moment we do have and we don't have enough influence to actually do that. We can't claim that land yet, but that will happen eventually. But to begin with, it's time to establish yet another uh, settlement. And what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves over to Goldhof. Was it Goldhof? Selbit. <laughs> and uh build our new town so the first thing we need to do is get our settlers camp up and running and i've got a, a little bit of a plan on how we're going to do that so we're going to place our settlers camp right here on this little fork in the road we want it to be plentiful it's going to cost us a bit more money but it gives us a really really good start point i'm then just going to line up this road here with the rest of the settlement and once this camp is established we will put in our first storage so we want a granary and i'm going to put the granary there and the storehouse is just going to go here. We then need to put in our logging camp, which is going to go across the road from the storehouse here, and their area is going to be just on the edge of that forest. We're also going to want to put in a forager's hut, and we're going to place the forager's hut right here. That's perfect, and next door to it, we will put in our hunting camp. Just there. Then we just need to get a road and line these two up like that. And I'll put a little bit of a fork in it as it comes out right next to the granary there. And that should start us off pretty nicely. We're going to want to put some burgage plots in as well. And we've got just about enough wood to get our first ones up and running. And I think I'm going to go around here in a little bit of it. We're not going to have a curve, actually. We're going to go to here. We're going to come out and along. I'm going to try and make it a bit bigger like that and then we'll reduce the size again so we get those extra buildings in and enough space for some vegetable gardens then over here we're going to do a little bit of a larger one kind of ends on the corner there but what i might do is we might put this here and then have it go kind of all the way around like that and we will reduce that so it's just the one plot with a big extra space on not particularly functional but it will do the trick we're then going to run a road up here and that road is going to go all the way along and come down to here so we'll have a road to the edge there and then we'll drag this road all the way along hopefully so that it matches up on the corner there like that right so that's our beginning and then around here we're just going to drag a road down and have it curve and then we can build our marketplace right there 
So let's get that set up next. Trade. Uh, it, no, it's not. It's residential. Marketplace. Along to here. To here. And then to that area there. That gives us 51 market stalls. So that should be good enough. Then we are going to need a well. There's a nice bit of water coming along here. So we can put the well just on the corner there. Matching the road. So that just about sets up all of our logistics. I'm also just going to move this hitching post. So we'll pick that up and relocate it right on the corner there. And the last thing so that we can get this kicked off is going to be a woodcutter's lodge. The woodcutter's lodge can kind of go just on the edge of the forest here. Just so it keeps away from where those trees are going to be chopped down by our woodcutter. Although I could also just put it here and have them take care of that forest over there. So that gets us started over here in Selbit. We've got exposed goods and stuff, but that's fine. Once we get set up with our first set of buildings, that should be okay. So we're just going to watch this build for a little bit. Okay, so we're heading into winter now, and as you can see, our settlement basic construction has been completed and we've actually gained a development point i don't know what i'm going to put this into right now but we will have a quick look at what we can possibly get just going to pause things a second so obviously we have the wild animals with a rich deposit so it could be worth going for trapping and then getting something else from here i think probably orchardry is going to be a good way to go just so we can get that up and running early i don't think salbit has particularly good uh, fertility uh, Emma's not looking great, it's down the bottom there, flax not good, barley and rye, rye pretty good but I don't have any intention of going into rye production so it might well be that we go for something like orchardry and apiaries just to uh, give us that little bit of a boost to our economy in terms of food so I think I'll take orchardry to begin with and then if we look a bit further on obviously we can get irrigation, we can get rye cultivation there but like I said the rye isn't great here and uh, yeah, we'll probably go down to trapping maybe or beekeeping as well. That gives us those three points. Then we'll take two from there and potentially take charcoal burning as well. Although it would be really good to have double the, the meat yield. Maybe we just forego beekeeping and then bulk out with other stuff. Yeah, we'll not go with beekeeping. We'll get trapping and advanced skinning and then we'll take charcoal burning. That gives us one, two, three, four, and then our five, six with trade logistics and better deals. I think that's probably going to be the best way to go for our development trees here. So for now with orchardry, I think it's probably best that we start plotting where we're going to put a few new houses. I think we'll probably keep on this side of the road. So let's uh, plan that now. We want to get some houses that come along this road here, this main street. And they're going to go all the way back to kind of match up with this area. And they can probably stop here. We've only got one timber, but yeah, you get the picture. What I'll do is I'll map that out with a road first. We'll kind of have it come up to here. And then curve around a touch. So then we get the ability to create these really nice looking orchards. We'll have the road go along the back here. And kind of curve along with the hill. And then it'll come down the hill on a, a slight incline. To finally match up with the mainland there. And then we can put little pathways that kind of cut through. Just so we get a bit of variation with our buildings. All the way down to here. And this can be the main thoroughfare for the town. Obviously, we'll be putting little bits and pieces in between. Uh, potentially, like this road here can cut through a little bit further. And that should still give us some decent sized orchards. And we can put a few like residual buildings on the other side there. And we'll have that kind of almost a grid pattern. So do forgive me. Uh, right, we just need some wood to come in there. And then if we head on over to Zvayao... There's been a development over there. So we've already got beekeeping. We've also got our heavy plow. We can go with fertilization and sheep breeding. That goes one, two, three, four, five, and six, I think. We'll stick with just firewood, really. We don't need to go too far into that. Could go with orchardry, though. That might be a, a bit of a bonus for us having apples here. Uh, but we do have a very vibrant farming community in this area. So perhaps taking apples would be a good idea. 
although I do think sheep breeding and fertilization would be a good idea, given the amount of farming we've got. So I will take fertilization for now. And then what do we need? We need some level three burgage plots, which is going to require the production of beer for our taverns. So we probably need a few more houses. But for the time being, everything is leveled up here, I think. We do have... Oh, wait, hang on. We've got level twos there. They're being constructed. We've got some there. And then I think we've got a few more here. Now, these were going to be goat patches. So I think we'll, we'll go with goats in here and here and here and then we're going to go with chicken coops on this side so we get three of those in like that and then i think i was saving these for orchards to be honest although they look a bit small for orchards so maybe we need to for some reason i can't get anything in there so i'm going to demolish that and actually we'll demolish this as well but i'm going to take what was I going to take? Heavy plough, fertilization, sheep breeding. That's four. Beekeeping. So I might not need to take sheep breeding and I could take orchardry instead. Now, better deals is for the foreign import tariff. So we could get rid of that. Same with trade logistics, actually. We're, although, yeah, let me think here. I think we should make this, we, we should go all in with our food. So we should take on orchardry. And then we'll get, we'll get orchardry, we'll get sheep breeding. We've got the beekeeping, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And then we could maybe take trade logistics or something as well. Just so that we can establish some new trade routes at a, at a cheaper cost. Although the amount of food that we're planning on pumping out here, I don't know if that's going to be necessary. We're going to demolish all of these because I think we need a new plan for that. Now, we do have a rich stone deposit here that we're going to look to exploit a little bit later on down the line. But for now, I think we'll leave that as it is and potentially look at putting in some new houses that are going to grow some vegetables for us. Because we're a little bit short here. I think all of these are going to be chicken coops at some point. We've got some vegetable patches there for some reason. They're very small. Um, I don't think they're going to do anything for us. So we could maybe swap these chicken coops and then get some slightly larger burgage plots put in to create some farms for us so i think what i'm going to try and do here is i'm just going to make a little bit of a road that comes out the back of this burgage plot and then loops around like that And then we'll put in some burgage along here. We'll just go all the way up. Then here. And then here. To the corner there. And then to the corner here. Okay. We'll have to work something out here. One, two. Right then. Let's just <laughs> hang on a second. Let's go along the back of this one to here and then up to here and have that even up with the rest of the settlement that way. Again, they're probably going to be chicken coops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Didn't make them small. I've got an idea actually rather than doing this the way that i've just done it we'll get rid of these and then we'll put in a new one facing the opposite side of the road so we're kind of surrounding our church there with some nice new burgage so we'll go along here and we'll bring it up to the corner of the church then back along to there we'll reduce the size I think that's decent. And then here, you want to try and stay as matched as possible to the edge of that house. So we'll come along to here, up to the end there, and then all the way along to there. 
And then again, we'll reduce the size. Yeah, decent. Build them, and then this little one here is just going to be the final one in this little row of houses. And we get it all boxed in quite nice and tight. There are going to be some little stubby gardens there. So this is quite a tight looking settlement, but I think it's because we're, we're investing heavily in farming here. We are going to need a livestock trading post, which we already have. So as soon as we unlock the... We've already got it. So we can fallow field, uh, use a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. So if we have a look over here, we should be able to fence up these just see what that does once the fence goes up and we will fence up every single one of our pasture or uh, fields here and then that's gonna really really help us out so we can actually build a manor here as well once we get a few more planks in and that's going to be useful because we can start bringing in some taxes and getting some all-important tithe income Let's have a look over at how Wald Brand is doing because the food situation is not too bad. Over here, we're still waiting for some wood to come in. Have we run out in our logging camp? Do we just not have any wood or are we missing something here? The hitching post. If we... Yeah, we don't have anything there. There's no trading post going on there. The building hasn't been paused. Let's put that to the highest priority and hope that we get some wood taken over there. Maybe we need another person working in the logging camp just to bolster that a little bit. We're also going to build the saw pit right next to our logging camp. But in general, we're looking pretty good. I think they might actually be favouring... Yeah, they are. They're favouring the burgage construction over here, which I think is good because we do need that. Right then. Over in cell bits, we do now have all of these burgage plots ready to produce vegetables, and we're going to start adding those extra living spaces in just to give that a little bit of a boost now some of these we're not able to get the extra living spaces in which is a bit of a mistake on my part so that's not good do we have no we can have two families living in there already so it's already had the upgrade on yet yeah, i'm looking right at the house there and not even recognizing it so we'll expand all of the living spaces that we've got that's going to give us even more housing yeah, I can see now we have 10 living spaces across the five houses that we've got built, which is good. So they're going to actually, they're starting to fell the trees in this area as well. We do now have a forager's hut, so we're going to put someone to work in that. And I think our storehouse is now done and our logging camp is fine. We do need some more people moving in here. So the homelessness situation is probably sorted out now. We are going to remove the forager and put them in the hunting camp. We're also probably going to need to remove somebody from something. Because at the moment, we're pretty full up. We've got the granary there. If we take away our logger, we can sort that out another time. Then we need to look at what it's going to take us to build our church. So in our uh, um, residential, we need 20 planks from the saw pit. So we need to build our saw pit again. We'll build it right next to our logging camp across the road from it. Once that's been constructed, we can start chopping some logs. Soon as we get the church up and running, this is going to be a lot easier because we're going to start getting people moving in. Let's have a quick look over in Eichenhau because I just want to make sure that the army is starting to come back to us. We've got militia footmen that we're waiting for and polar militia. We just have a look at our blacksmiths. They're making spears. We're going to swap them to pole arms. And yeah, we've got them making side arms, so that's fine. And they are also making side arms. We've got two blacksmiths on side arm production. And one on... Two on pole arm and one on side arms. Okay, that's fine just our pole arm that we need to finish off we've got plenty of spears our archer militia's back up and running my full retinue is ready as well so my plan is once we actually build the manor over here and we're going to put a lot into this manor we're going to make it pretty beefy and uh, try to stay behind our walls for as long as possible invite the enemy lord onto us because the battle kind of covered the area on the edge of Hofstedden 
then over into Goldhoff a little bit and into Cell Bits. So that's why we're using that as a staging point. So if we can get that done nice and easy, I think we'll be in a much better position. So <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to have a right old go at the enemy lord next time. But things are looking good. We're starting to progress over here in Selbitz. We have an approval rating of 51% because of a market food variety. So we might actually get some people moving in now. All of our burgage plots have been upgraded and our settlers are starting to plant those crops. So food will eventually be a thing of a past, like as a, as a worry for us. Uh, we currently have the hunting camp up, but I'm going to take them out of that and get them foraging instead. Just because those berries are a little bit more, like they're a little bit quicker to harvest than the rest of the stuff. We have the saw pit up and running, so I think now that winter is over, we're going to take someone out of the woodcutter's lodge and have them work in the saw pit. And we might as well, for now, take them away from the storehouse and have them work in the logging camp so that we can try and get as much uh, planks built as possible and get the church up and running as a priority. And I think we'll uh, call it once we've managed to get that church up and running, but we do need to go back to Eichenhau. We need to get our original mana and increase the land tax by 50% just so that we can bring in a little bit more money. If we have a look at our current trading, we are probably not exporting much. We're still exporting roof tiles, so that's fine. Food, we are importing a lot, even though, yeah, we don't need to be importing stuff. So we'll turn that off. We'll turn that off. We'll turn the import of eggs off and we'll turn the export of vegetables off for now because i think we're still exporting that to other locations i believe all of our shields are done so we can actually have our joiners switch back to producing wooden uh, parts and that'll then get that trade back up and running then if we go over to we've got crafting materials there the export of firewood is still happening the export of leather is still happening that's fine we can leave them on commodities now shoes we could actually export shoes so i'm going to establish a trade route and i'm going to export shoes but we want our surplus we want to keep like one pair of shoes for every household so we'll leave our export surplus as 209 over in military we've got quite a few war bows that we are still exporting so that's fine if we put our surplus to the number of archers we have which is 72 we can trade out all of the long bows that we currently have so if we make that 72, we'll be able to sell war bows for absolute days. And it's going to be the same over here with our small shields. I think we have just the one. So again, small shields, we're going to trade them out. And we're going to make sure that they are kept at uh, the large shields. We want to keep at 72. So we're not actually going to export them yet. The small shields, 36. Uh, pole arms, we're going to leave a surplus of 36 for those. Side arms, we're going to leave a surplus of 36 for them. And it just means that if we do decide to continue exporting, we're always going to have enough to replenish our military if we need to. I think that just about finishes all of the trade setup for there. Now, planks, we have 1,164 planks apparently. I think we should be exporting some of those. So we're going to leave a surplus of around about 350 in. And then that's just going to allow us to really, really boost our regional wealth here. Now we have taken our tax of 50%. So we once again, we take our taxes away, get our citizen happiness back up. Right, we are short of something over here. We're short of food. Do we have no, we don't have anybody working in the forager hood. So let's put four people working in there. That's going to bring in some food. And we actually have enough here to... We've got a hunting camp up and running. We could actually... Let's build another hunting camp. Now, we do want to be careful not to overhunt, but I think we should be okay. So we'll build a second hunting camp because, look, we've got 41 wild animals in there. The hunting limit is 10. So we're not hunting based on like you know we've got so much more that we can do there in terms of our hunting cabin over in cell bits just to finish things off how are we looking we got 50 planks that is going to be more than enough to finally build our church 
and I am going to put my church right on the corner here. So it kind of becomes this centralized area. Once the church is built, we'll get a really good boost to the happiness of our village. Also, if we can get some level 2 burgage plots, which we are not far from, we just need more fuel. But we do have people moving in here, which means we can bring one person back into the woodcutter's lodge. The logging camp's working, the saw pit's working. We can have, I guess when we get another person moving in, we can get someone back in the storehouse. But how are we looking in the forager? I hope we've got somebody foraging there, but I think we maybe need to change their work area. So we'll do that. And then we've got 54 berries, so we're okay. We can get a hunter up and running in there and have them hunt in that zone. Great. So one more person to move in there, and then we'll get the woodcutters back into action. In fact, we can for now. Just so that I know I'm okay, I'm going to take you away from the logging camp. Oh, I've got a woodcutter. It's the storehouse that I'm lacking. But that's fine. We can leave the logging camp off. We get the storehouse back up and running so that people can access stuff. And we will build a tanner over here as well. So the tanner will just go right next to the hunting lodge. We don't have enough goods for that. I don't have anyone working in the logging camp. We'll maybe do the tanner next time then. And over here is looking good. Eichenhau's looking pretty good, and Zvayau is also looking good. So I think that just about ends our episode. We've made some really big leaps forward here uh, with our new regions. We've uh, actually started to colonize four of the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four of the seven regions we started now colonizing, and we only have Hofstedden left, but this is going to be a bit of a long-term project whilst we uh, get things set up for our final kind of assault on the enemy lord after they utterly embarrassed us last time. So that's it for me from Selbit, from the rest of our kingdom. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.